Do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Say baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism. Say buried with him. Through baptism into his death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Say walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. And so this is the definition of baptism, and we can learn a lot from this one passage. And the, we always think that baptism is some symbolism, and it's not really that important, and it's kind of an optional thing. And we're going to discover today that baptism is not optional. It is a requirement of Christianity, and it is perhaps one of the single most important ordinances of the church, and not something to be forbidden. And you know, it was interesting there because a study done of North American Baptist churches, and they revealed there was 10,000 Baptist churches last year that did not baptize a single person. You know what I think? I think they need to change their name. <laughs> I think if you call yourself a Baptist, you should baptize people. That's just me, right? I, I think it's important. I mean, it's like us being Church of the Rock and not doing 80s rock. Right? It would just be wrong, right, if we didn't do 80s rock. I mean, people say, what's wrong with them? They don't, don't do 80s rock. And so when we look at this thing called baptism, this passage tells us a lot about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the W5s, the five Ws of dawn of the dead or of baptism. Here, here they are. And, and what is baptism? Who is it for? Why, when, and where? So the first thing, maybe the most important thing, is what is baptism? What is this thing all about? And it, it said so, it said what it was in our passage. It said, for as many were baptized, were baptized into his death. And so what happens during baptism is even though it's not literal, even though it's symbolic in one sense, what it is, it's an identification with the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So, for example, when we baptize people, we take them and we throw them down, we dunk them down into the water, and that dunking is an identification with the death of Christ, the going down, the dying. And then we put them under the water, we immerse them in the water. And that is an identification with the burial of Christ. Christ died, and then he was buried. And if you end the baptism there, you're doing it wrong. Right? <laughs> you need to bring the person back up again. Right? Like, like this picture here. I'm not sure what they were up to, <laughs> but they're doing it wrong. And, and at some point, you have, to, you have to bring them up or, you know, we've lost a couple in this church. Sometimes, you know, I've held them down just a little too long and didn't work out really well. And so it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And so that's what it's all about. It's about us being risen in the newness of life and it is so incredibly important because who we used to be is actually dead. And we are now the dawn of the dead. We are living a new life. <laughs>